Welcome to a mid-year freakout tag that is not actually a mid-year freakout tag, nor is it a tag. Nor is it a freakout. Nor are we freaking out. Yeah, pretty much. Mid-year check-in. Hi. Hi. So this video is going to be... Um, sort of like the mid-year freak out tag we're going to steal a couple of the questions that we like uh we're going to ignore the questions that we don't like and we're just going to talk about how the first half of 2024 has been in terms of reads and then we might do our long list for the eventual tubies that will be done at the end of the year which mm. is our story tube award show awards thing anyway you need people of intelligence on this sort of mission, quest, thing. And um, maybe these, you could consider them the tubelings. Mm. The wee tubies. Oh. <laughs> Los tubitos. Something along those lines. Yes. We'll give you, a, yeah, like a brief, a little long list. A little long list. A test tubies. A short long list. <laughs> yes. The test tubies. <laughs> okay. So as of the mid-year point of 2024, what was your biggest surprise? Positive surprise, I presume. Positive surprise, usually, yeah. Um, probably Guidance of the Moon, actually by Steven Erickson, which will come as a shock maybe to absolutely nobody who might watch this channel. But I don't think I was expecting to like that book that much. Mm. So that was the surprise. And then it kicked me on a bit of a malazan journey for the first six months of this year. So yeah, go watch the review. Go watch the reviews of all the malazan videos. There's non-spoilers in all of them. I'd say my biggest surprise. Can I give you two? Yeah, there's no rules here. Great. Um, so two biggest surprises. The biggest surprise in terms of quality and how interesting I found it was In a Lonely Place by Dorothy B. Hughes. Which, oh, that's a good one as well. Yeah, I think... Yeah, that's my other one. Cool. I think I was expecting it, same as you, to be like a pulpy, classic 40s L.A. noir. And there were, it was, but there was a lot more to it. And there was more of a commentary and that was... It was interesting. It was a it was a cool, different kind of reading experience. And in terms of surprise of how much I enjoyed myself, Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros, which was my first read of the year, and it's a sequel to Fourth Wing. And it's a worse book than Fourth Wing, I think, and has some issues that I could point out, and I was stupidly invested in it. What was your biggest disappointment? My biggest disappointment is probably The Book That Broke the World by Mark Lawrence. Which I recently chatted about a little bit with uh, Philip and Jared. Philip from Philip Chase and Jared from The Fantasy Thinker. And I kind of go into more details, not too many spoilers really, uh, about why maybe that book just felt like a middle book to me. It felt like treading a lot of the same ground that the first book did did which i loved i love the first book the book that uh wouldn't burn i kind of felt that maybe it's a it's an issue maybe with fantasy perhaps because he's stepping outside of fantasy a little bit you know breaking the genre conventions writing something a little bit more literary perhaps the theme is the center of the book and i feel like the idea and the message being explored was already explored for me in the first one and there, there wasn't much new depth to be added to it in the second one and with the intricate plot that is in that series it got a little too convoluted for me and it has been a year since i read the first one so i was struggling to remember things even with the recap that he had at the beginning of the book but that's never really been an issue for me before with remembering things i i sometimes leave series for three years and then come back to them one i came back to this year after three years and i've loved every book that i've read is the, the expanse so it's you know it's not entirely on the fact that i wasn't remembering things i wasn't necessarily in the mood it was just a combination of 
combination of factors, I reckon, with that book. But that's more of a case of super high expectations yeah. and it just being okay. And the other one for me would probably be Slow Horses by Mick Heron, oh. which, again, not a bad book, but I had higher expectations for it than what it gave me. I feel like I contributed to that because I finished it pretty quickly and really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I just found the writing style maybe not to my taste, but it was also a little jarring, choppy, somewhat truncated from scene to scene, mm. so I couldn't situate myself. Um, I found it like more confusing to read that sometimes than people say Malazan is to be honest, just because of the transitioning from scene to scene, sometimes within a sentence, I don't know where we are or what we're really looking at. And I never have that problem with Malazan, which is why the, the, the aura of confusion that Malazan has confuses me. But yeah, Slow Horses was fine. I feel like maybe had he, instead of just giving each character at the beginning a chapter showing us how miserable they all are it got repetitive instead of doing that flow the story or uh, start the plot a little bit sooner and flow it a bit more naturally perhaps i don't know it just it wasn't really working for me i struggled to get invested even though i thought there was a lot of personality in the writing so it's a series i'll probably come back to i'll probably start watching the show actually and then come back to it afterwards. Mm. But it could be a first book and maybe he finds his feet later, I don't know. So my two, my two biggest disappointments were um, Private Rights by Julia Armfield, which was a, my most recent read, actually. And I read her short story collection, Salt Slow, and her novel or novella, um, Our Wives Under the Sea, last year. Loved both of them. New favourite author. Extremely hyped for her new book, Private Rights, which came out last month in the UK and Ireland and I think it's coming out later in the year in the US and there was a lot to love about the book but it kind of overstayed its welcome a little bit and I didn't like the ending the ending was a huge letdown for me and I, I ended up feeling like the book didn't really know what it wanted to be I'll definitely do like some kind of video on it I haven't decided exactly on what format so I, I won't make this too long but yeah also a case of it I don't think it's a bad book I didn't hate it it's an interesting three star for me where um, rather than like a meh three star it's just one that had high highs and low lows but yeah definitely disappointed because I loved her other two too much um so much and I, I really thought that this one missed the mark a little bit and the other one is Definitely a case of expectations getting the better of me. I don't think I've ever had expectations this high for any book in my life. Not even like anticipated books like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows or like Lightbringer. Like this was, I was just certain that it was going to be in the top three of the series and I love the entire series. And it wasn't. And that is Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. And before you panic, if you love Hob and Realm of the Elderlings, I still love Hob and Realm of the Elderlings. And I did like a lot about Assassin's Fate. And I've been sitting on it for like four months now. And I still haven't make a video, made a video about it because I, th I keep thinking about it and having new ideas. And like, I, there's a lot to ponder about that book and that trilogy and the entire series. And I had a chat with Derry over on her channel um, which helped contextualize a lot of it for me. So I still gave that book like 4.5 stars. So it's not a bad book. It's not a book I didn't like, but it didn't live up to the highs I expected from it, which was kind of unfair and due to partially booktube hype, but also what I've come to expect from Hob. And again, kind of like with Private Rights, it's one that I want to dedicate some more time to and eventually do a, a little bit of a video maybe about my recapping my experience with the whole series and talk about what my um letdowns with it were even more so than issues i feel like issues is too strong of a word but yeah um unfortunately it was a disappointment even though it's entirely because of my expectations rather than because of the book 
in any way not being good. Another question on the mid-year freakout tag that I enjoy is, um, well, I enjoy it if I have an answer for it, really, because <laughs> quite often I don't have an answer for it. But what is the new release or anticipated release that you are anticipating or that you are excited to read? <laughs> so the new release from 2024 that I'm most excited to get to in the second half of the year is City in Ruins by Don Winslow. I am excited and scared and sad and excited to read his last book. It came out in March or April and I've been kind of pushing it out um, because I don't want to read his last book. But yeah, I'm excited. You don't want to read his last book. I do want to read it, but I don't, you know? I want to read it and not finish it ever. Sure. You don't understand what I mean? No, not really. Really? I understand it. You've never wanted to, like, not finish something because it's so good? I've wanted things to carry on, yeah, but I've never not wanted to read it because of that. Well, I want to read it. I just don't want to finish it. But if I read it, I will finish it, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Yeah, I get it. (laughs) Totally get it. (laughs) Um, I actually have a brand new release that I'm excited to actually read and I think I will actually read it. This doesn't happen to me very often because I'm quite poor (laughs) at keeping up with new releases and like prioritizing them because I don't really give a shit. I'm also quite poor. But this is not, I I I feel like this is a booktube thing of like new release. This, This never happened to me in my reading life before booktube. No, unless it was a series that I was already yeah. in and I was just looking forward to the next book. But maybe it's a fantasy thing because it's predominantly series. Yeah, um, it is, yeah. Like I've never, I've never really anticipated anything in a series, like something coming out or whatever. Anyway, I have had a level of anticipation for this book and it came out today. I think so. Uh, or yesterday. The Daughter's War by Christopher Buhlman. The Black Tongue Thief is probably one of my favorite fantasy books, actually. It's uh, astoundingly well written. Uh, such marvelous prose and a wonderful sense of humor and wit. I tend to think that that book is one of the most Irish books ever written by an American. <laughs> if you know Irish sense of humor and you've read that book, you'll understand i know some people criticize it for immature humor but i don't really get that it's very witty and playful and quite irish actually so i love that book but also what i like about that book is the goblins and the sort of world building around it because it's it's not overbearing in your face uh, there's a very sort of scary scene in it and christopher Buhlman is obviously also a horror writer um and apparently the daughter's war goes into Galva, the other character from from that first book. And this takes us back in time to the Goblin War and uh, has a different tone. So I'm excited to see him write in the same world with a different tone, with a different character, a different narrative voice, but with his nice, lovely, delightful prose because he can string a sentence together, this guy. Um, I actually think that he's one of the most talented writers currently working in fantasy. Maybe a little bit underappreciated. Um, You know, he's a little tropey and stuff, but I think what he's doing with language in the fantasy genre is unrivaled at the moment. I will probably read that soon. Nice. Which, doesn't again, doesn't happen to me very often, which is exciting. It's exciting. It's a fantasy book, new release. Um, I'm probably going to read it. We are excited. Excitement. Excitement. Are you ready to hear our nominees, our first half of the year nominees towards Book of the Year? Our long oh, list. The Tublings. Our, the Tublings. You will now see these books in bookshops with a little sticker saying long listed for the Tubi Awards. 2024. I don't know what mine are. Oh. I'm going to scroll through my Goodreads and just call stuff out. Great. Because you have just received the information of who has been longlisted and you're just reading it out for the first time. Yeah. A Storm of Swords, which I finished in January, but predominantly read in January because I only read a couple hundred pages at the end of last year. So 
I'm still I still got a count of Storm of Swords for 2024. I'm sure George R. R. Martin will be honored. Yes, he will. Well done, George. Uh, In a Lonely Place by Dorothy B. Hughes. Up there. Cibola Burn by James S. A. Corey. The Female Man by Joanna Russ. Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. The Power of the Dog by Don Winslow. Maybe After Atlas by Emma Newman. Cool. Current long list of some favorite reads of 2024. Uh, I also really enjoyed Firewatch by Connie Willis, which is just a short story. So we'll, you know, we'll see how that does in short fiction category at the end of the year. What about your long list currently? My current long list for the 2024 To Be Awards consists of Ohio by Stephen Markley, Mystic River by Dennis Lahan, Happy Place by Emily Henry, also Funny Story by Emily Henry because I can't pick one yet, City of Dreams by Don Winslow, Boy Parts by Eliza Clark, and something else. Oh, Will and Testament by Vigdis Yorth. Since we're known on the channel for reading uh, a whole load of crap and being a little all over the place in terms of genre, how about we do us a little uh, top three from each genre, perhaps our favorite genres. Sure. That we've read, genre, that we've read so far this year. Uh, Shall we do, I think my top four genres that I've read this year and pretty much every year are crime, sci-fi, literary fiction and uh, recent in recent years fantasy so we can do one from each of those genres perhaps sure do you want to give me a short list a little uh three, three. your three favorite from each of those genres we'll do those four genres because they're the big ones for us anyway fantasy off the top of my head what are three fantasy books that i've read and liked this year that you've loved yeah saint's blood the fifth season and assassin's fate which I know I said was my biggest disappointment, but what about your fantasy? Well, Memories of Ice, uh, <laughs> A Storm of Swords, and A Wizard of Earthsea, which I oh. thought was very pleasant. And I'll be talking about it in our next, I guess, monthly wrap-up, because I've read a shit ton of books in the last month or so, probably due to the fact that I lost my job, <laughs> and I have a lot of free time. So... You'll hear about that one soon. Crime. Power of the Dog. Small Mercies. And The Searcher. Nice. By Tana French. Nice. Oh. In a Lonely Place. Mm. Mystic River. Slow Horses. In a Lonely Place. And City on Fire. Oh, God, yeah. Well, City of Dreams, because City on Fire was a reread, but yeah. What were the other... Science fiction. Have you read much science fiction this year? I have primarily read Red Rising, which... Again, third (laughs) year in a row rereading that series. But I'll give you my top two science fiction that isn't rereads, and that is The Female Man and Leviathan Wakes. Nice. Very good books. Two very good books, very different from each other. Yes. Uh, Sci-fi for me... After Atlas by Emma Newman. Nice. The Female Man by Joanna Russ. And maybe Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, cool. which you'll also hear about in the upcoming wrap up. That will do. Cool. And maybe a fourth one will be Seabull Burn by uh, James S. Corey, which is book four in The Expanse. Which nice. Of the three I've read this year, that was, that was my favorite. Literary fiction. Literary fiction. Literary fiction. I would say. The Battle of the Side Cafe by Carson McCullers, which is a novella. Rapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. So two very American literary books. And Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. Cool. Which was a wonderful, funny little book about anxiety. My top three literary fiction are pretty clear cut. And in no particular order, they are Ohio by Stephen Markley, which is a sad epic about America and also just 
people in the 21st century. Will and Testament by Evigdis Yorth, which is also very sad, and it's about families and how fucked up they are. And Eliza Clark's Boy Parts, which nice. is funnier, but not really lighter than the other two. Yeah. Do you have any like parting, parting words about your like 2024 plans, how it's going, how you're feeling about your reading? Well, I think if, uh, even though I don't tend to make too many plans and I, I'm not too strict about my reading, I set out with an idea at the start of the year that we, we, we set out with our 2024 reading plans video to tackle certain kinds of books. I feel I've been pretty good with that while keeping an air of flexibility for myself. Um, so I've read some American authors that I wanted to try, Carson McCullers, uh, Flannery O'Connor, I've read one of the big Steinbecks, so I've kept that project going. I neglected science fiction a little bit last year, and it's, I think, my most read genre this year. I didn't necessarily neglect crime the last few years, but it certainly took a back seat to fantasy, so I've pulled that back now. I think that's my second most read genre. I think fantasy is tied for fourth place with literary fiction. Um, I kind of wanted to bring a bit of balance back, but... To the force. Yes. In my exploration of, of fantasy, I've really learned uh, in the last few years what it is I like and what it is I'm a bit more meh on. Really developing my taste there, which was the whole idea. Still continuing on with my chronology of fantasy. I've read some big ones now. And uh, added in another classic this month with Le Guin. So mm -hmm. I've I've kept going, chipping away at, at all the plans that I did, or vague plans that I made for in our 2024, early 2024 plans video. Um, and I think for the rest of the year, goal will be to keep it going that way, loosey-goosey, flexible, open to whatever. Uh, there's a few that I do really want to get to before the end of the year. I'd like to finish Midnight Tides and maybe get the first half of Malazan done this year and potentially even carry on. We'll see. Hyperion is a big one. Hyperion by Dan Simmons. So our friend Tanner has been telling me lately to push up the month of January <laughs> and read Hyperion. God damn it. So I will try to read that very soon. After that, I have the kind of idea to read a few of the sci-fi masterworks because I'm in that mood. I just read some Connie Willis for the first time and I've got a load of masterworks that I've read a few of. I want to read, tackle a few more because they're all quite short and, you know, balancing big Malazan books with some of these short books is quite fun. Penguin have been coming out with new crime classics. Yeah. They're little green editions and I've discovered some really cool ones there. So I might read more of those and just, yeah. Cool. Throw yeah. in whatever. I'd like to read some of the crime classics as well. Any thoughts to wrap up on how you've been doing this year and what you want to do for the rest of this year? Well, if I remember correctly, my two main goals were, um, one was to make less plans, less TBRs, less body reads. And I have failed spectacularly at that. There's been a few months most months actually where I've ended up somehow with a TBR even though I didn't want one. You are running two book clubs in work though. At yeah. a, for a while you were covering three. Yeah well one of them I'm just kind of going to Part right taking. and like the other yeah so like that that's been a bit much so definitely want to scale back on that. My other big goal was to finish some series so I didn't want to start any series particularly big series before finishing a few. I had like a list of priority series like four or five of them that I wanted to definitely finish this year. And I have finished one, but I started a bunch, including Malazan and The Expanse. So that is also going really well. Um, I should just never make plans, ever. But uh, speaking of that, my plans for the rest of the year are to actually finish the series I said I was gonna finish. Um, but I am very happy with the amount of crime I've been reading. There's been some bad ones, but there's also been some really great ones. So I want to continue to read more of the great ones. 
and also read some more literary fiction. I've been in the mood for sad literary fiction lately and maybe some more classics. I've neglected classics. Neglected classics as well, yeah. Uh, I mean, real classics, not just modern classics. Yeah, no, like like a hundred years yeah. old, kind of, or more. more than a hundred Yeah, like years. 19th century classics. A hundred years old is now 1920. Oh my God. One thing I want to uh, rectify in the second half of the year, and obviously this is to do with who we interact with and also where we live currently. Uh, but I've yet to read a book in Spanish this yeah. year and I, I need to rectify that. Um, I want to read more Spanish in German, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I have a Spanish book sitting on the table there, La Colmena by Cela. What's his, what's his name? Camilo José Cela. Camilo José Cela. There you go. So I might read that at some point. And um, there's a few... There's a few crime authors in, that are very popular in Spain. Crime fiction is huge in Spain. Um, and I have a few sitting there ready to go. So I might throw one of those in. But yeah, I think reading as well in in Spanish. Yeah. Um, which I have not done in the first six months of this year. This was meant to be a short check-in of how we're doing this year and throw out some favorites and some ideas. So let us know what your long list would be so far for your favorite books of the year. A Any... mini, a mini tubies. What are your tubelings? What are your tubelings? What's your biggest surprise? Any disappointments? Let, let us know. Let us know your long lists and short lists at the halfway point of the year and how you see it going in the second half of the year. Bye, see you later. Like, subscribe, comment down below. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.